mocking spirits, any type of uh, demons that want to come from the pit, that want to enter people and do foolishly. We send them back quickly. We're not moved or shaken because we've received a kingdom that cannot be moved or shaken. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. God bless you, Susan, as you're coming in. Shalom. I thought I saw my dear sister Sita come in. I still don't know how to say your name. God bless you and the apostle. Hallelujah. Shalom to you, woman of God. Bless and praise your holy name, Adonai. Glorify yourself today. Glorify yourself today. Lord, I praise you, God. Lord God, because your strength is immeasurable. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know who's ready. Is somebody ready? Is somebody ready? Please, look. can we get the likes up? Let's get the likes up. Let's get the likes up to 1K. Shalom, shalom. Let's get the likes up. Now, I want to talk to you about something before we get into prophetic codes. Before we get into prophetic codes, I want to talk to you about something. Realize that Moses, hallelujah, let me know if I'm being overpowered by the, by the music. Realize Moses was bringing a case to Pharaoh. And you know what Pharaoh says? I don't know him. I don't know the Lord. Why should I <laughs> listen to what the Lord is saying? So realize that God is trying to bring a deliverance. At the same time, he's orchestrating the strengthening of the heart of Moses. The hardening of the heart of, I'm sorry, not Moses, of, of Pharaoh. To bring oppression to the children of Israel. Why would God bring more oppression why would God bring more oppression to the people that he wanted to set free realize that when people have become dull they no longer hear from the Lord nor have seen them they have come into a bondage and if that you come easily from that bondage what would be the point of worshiping the Lord look at this we read this this morning when I was teaching my children when we were doing uh, the church now, let's look at let's look at Psalms really quickly. Psalms twenty four. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. So the might of the Lord has to be seen in comparison. So he's strengthening his enemies to show how mighty exactly he is. Anyone who receives a deliverance that is easy may forsake that deliverance. But the, when the deliverance is hard, when you go through trials and tribulations, you hold on to the kingdom which you have received. You, you value that thing so much more. You begin to fall to your knees and lift your hands and say, you're worthy, Lord. And it's, it becomes pure and true. Now understand that Moses, when he brings forward the case, they say, what will you do when you go out from here? So I need to take our livestock and this and that, that I could offer. We could offer sacrifice and worship the Lord. That didn't sit well with the gods, the little G's of Egypt. But understand that from the beginning, the Lord knew what he would do from the beginning. From the beginning, he knew that he would curse the marine demons of the river. He knew that he would blot out the sun gods that they trust in. He knew that he would curse the gods of the, the field. He knew that he would have to show himself above every single god that they claimed. Every single fallen angel that they trusted in in Egypt. Because it's not just that they were trusting in something that wasn't real they were trusting in forces that were real they were trusting in the appearances of of spirits that were real and these spirits were appearing to them that's why they know what anubis looks like they have a little statue we know that these things these are not things that they believe these are things these are spirits that had appeared to them that they began to worship 
so <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> so for God to show himself more mighty God bless you T-Way God bless you for God to show himself more mighty he had to strengthen the people against them and say no we're not going to let you go easy that even Israel saying ah, Moses why did you even come here is it better that we would die here? <laughs> we should. You should have just get out of You should have just left us there to serve the Egyptians. It's better that we would serve the Egyptians. That you would bring us out here. I understand it. The thing that bothered them so badly was that they said that they would go and take sacrifice. We would sacrifice to the Lord and to the Lord alone. So what the bondage is all about, truly, what the bondage is all about, what your warfare is all about, is that you would not serve the Lord. May God strengthen this connection. This is an important word. I hope somebody's hearing. Shalom, Prophet Nick. God bless you, sir. Understand this. That all of the warfare is that you would say, oh, it's better for me to just go back to Egypt. Yeah, it's better if I just, mm, things were more calm then. Because realize this. The war is to bring you into the actions that cause you to come into idolatry. The Bible says that that the Father will love you when you obey the commands and I'll manifest myself to you and I'll love you, manifest myself to you. So you know by the act, the acts, the actions of obedience, that's how God says, now you love me. I know that you love me. So the actions of doing his word is the real worship. When you take the actions of another spirit and you commit those actions, that spirit then enters you and appears to you and manifests itself to you. And then you come into idolatry. And it becomes an idol because another spirit is entering you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the reason why he says, don't do these, this, 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 this. It's not that he wants to stop our fun. Is that if you act out these actions in the flesh, then these spirits will enter you. And these demons will come to oppress you. Some demons, when they appear, they don't even want to enter you. They just want to drag you by a chain. Some people don't know. That's exactly how curses work. When a curse is placed on someone, a demon begins to follow you. Many times that demon does not want to enter you. It just wants to follow you around and oppress you. And once it's clung to you, and wherever it clings to you, it can cause you sickness, or it can then jump on another person and they'll treat you badly. Then it'll leave that person, you go to work, and then it'll oppress somebody else, your boss or whoever. Then it'll leave that person when you leave that place, and it'll go and follow you again, and then it'll go to another person and use them. That's how curses work. There's no curse that can work without spirits being released. Are you understanding me? All of life is spiritual. Hallelujah. God bless you, Jovi. God bless you, Sah. Shalom, shalom. So people take it very calmly when people are doing curses. Yet understand how this thing works. Somebody has committed themselves by blood covenant. To continue to send demon spirits to oppress you your entire life. And try to mess you up. It's not, a, it's not a small infraction. It needs to be dealt with with violence. That's how God dealt with it. He gave chance after chance. Understand the engagements of warfare. He gave chance after chance. Knowing that hey, Pharaoh has set himself up in his heart to be a god. He is in idolatry of himself. Now when I come to tell him. Let my people go. Every time he's going to say no. So since I've given too many chances. And he's also continued to pursue them in the desert. <laughs> he's continued to go to the sea. 
He's gone too far. He wants to follow through the sea. Realize, realize the oppression. If somebody has committed themselves to continue to pursue you, to continue to pursue you, even to put themselves in danger, that same grave that they're digging for you, they will fall in it. Some people are so committed to the end of it. They, they say they want, to, they want to destroy you. They want to kill you. God has no choice but to destroy them. And I teach these things a lot because people want to know warfare. People are asking me, when are you going to teach on warfare? When are you going to teach on I'm always teaching on warfare. But when it comes to war, people don't like when it gets real. They want to say, let's forgive everyone and let's usher everybody into the kingdom without consequence. That's fine with me. Even the Bible is telling you this. I'll bring scripture to show you this. Because we love people. We don't want them to be harmed. We don't want them. To, but you're ta if you're talking about war, understand what happens in physical war. You think it's not more intense spiritually? You're crazy. It's absolutely more intense. 150,000%. Because you're good. Listen, there's real heaven and there's real hell. You think the demons are playing to, to not drag everybody they can to hell? You're joking. You're joking. Satan is out of his mind. He's literally insane. <laughs> He's sinister. <laughs> where Where is Isaiah? I'm, I'm in Isaiah. Please follow me if you can. Isaiah 45. Where is it? Where is it? Woe to him who strives with his maker. This is verse 9. Okay. May the Lord strengthen you. You say, you're feeling it today. Please pray. pray. Pray for your strength. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord strengthen you, even as we're speaking his word. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or shall your handiwork say he has no hands? Woe to him who says to his father, what are you begetting? Or to, your, or to the woman, what have you brought forth? Now understand, we are made of the clay. He's talking about people. Let the people fight with people. So God is even saying it's better that people will clash with each other. In other words, everything now is made neutral if you understand the battleground. Boom. Now you're realizing why he's saying it's kingdom against kingdom. It's power against power. When Satanists attain power from Satan, when they attain something which is stolen, because all things come from God, but when they get certain things because Satan does have authority, he's still anointed. When they do, we get this power to to do wickedness, to do spells, to send demons in your dream, to send demons to sleep with you in your dream, all these things. Then understand, whoever has the most power is going to win. Let the pot shirts fight with the pot shirts. So it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principality, against power. If Realize this. If somebody's sending something into your dream and they're being used, they're being used by that principality. I don't care if they get saved. Let them get saved. I'll preach the gospel to them. But you continue to fashion yourself. You continue to fasten yourself. Can you hear me? Okay. Sure. Sorry. Your, your comment was kind of distracting. When you when people fas fashion themselves against you, it's literally the principality that's using. That's using them. You understand that, right? When a whole city begins to fight you, I don't know if that's that's what your calling is. But me and Prophet Dan have experienced when the entire city will be fighting you. The whole, the, the whole city. When Apostle Paul went to that place and he cast that demon out, that, that serpent out of the woman who had the fortune telling spirit. It was a serpent. It was a snake. But the same thing began to then oppress everyone in the thing that they beat them and threw them in prison. That's what it is like. When the whole city begins to fight you, you say, wait, this, this doesn't even make sense. I'm doing something good and you're fighting me. You hate me. Now, now, when this thing begins to happen, then you have to pray in a certain way. Realize this: how this works is this. Satan is not everywhere, so he has to use a network. 
And so realize there's no real thing called a monitoring spirit because every spirit is a monitoring spirit. Every demon is a monitoring spirit. So realize you should hold your information very closely to you when you understand this thing. How they work is they speak to the head spirit that is there, the, the witches, and they act all together to bring an oppression over, his, over God's people. Try to. That even it could be orchestrated that everyone, they don't even know why, they'll be possessed. And they'll all fight together against you by reason of your calling. And they'll try to get you to stumble, walk away, stop praying, do all these things. That's what they try to do. I remember uh, Papa Lowe was talking about, he said, when I set up the church, when he was setting up the church, he had to, he had to do some certain things to cover the church because every church and people were picketing his, they, they were rebelling against the church <laughs> outside the church. They were, they were fighting the church from opening, not realizing they were, be, they were being possessed and controlled by the occultists in the area because they knew the works and the deliverance that was coming through that building. This thing is for real. <laughs> that when they all fashion together, this is why the, the word says this, and this is how it's fulfilled. Psalms verse or chapter 2. Why do the nations rage in vain and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. In what? In confusion. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun lest he be angry and you perish in the way. God is saying you fight me too long, you will perish in the way. You're going to die. <laughs> When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. So understand many people, too many, countless people have died fighting God and his anointed. Too bad. It's too bad for them that they had to be blinded. Realize some of these people want to get out of the darkness, but by reason of the idolatry that they've gone into, the demons that are controlling them, even a fraction of their soul that wants to see the light, they get twisted by the demons and they're taken into their blood contract deeper and they, they're just being controlled. And it's unfortunate that it drags them to hell most of the time. But understand, is it not better for you to survive and serve the Lord that more souls will go to heaven and not go to that place? Or should you suffer your whole life trying to say, oh, please forgive, please be, be forgiven, please, please receive the gospel, and yet they can't hear you. In fact, when you do that, the demons in them get more angry that they begin to attack you even more. Then you suffer even more. Or should you protect yourself and get violent? Because Jesus has said this, when, you, when I leave from here, you shall grab a sword. I don't know who's teaching that you shouldn't protect yourself. That's not Christianity. Jesus said, when I leave here, grab a sword. He said, Master, there's two swords here. He said, it's enough. So understand, even physically, somebody comes to me. I can cut you with a sword if you try to take my life. We're not people who lay down and just fall down. Okay, <laughs> let me fall in my grave. No, you come for my life. I'm coming for you first. Listen, I don't know who's teaching these things nowadays. It's craziness. It's nonsense. We know that you're not hearing the master because that's not even what the Bible is saying. That's not even what the master has already said. Listen, <laughs> listen to me. If you come for me, I can come for you. This is the Bible. You say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if you want to be the Egyptian, listen to me. If you want to be the Egyptian that continue to pursue, continue to pursue. We, we give you grace. We forgive. We do all these things. But you come too close to the sea. He said, Moses, stretch forth your rod that it would cover the Egyptians, that the Egyptians that you've seen, you shall see no more. Are you understanding me? Are you understanding me? 
I know who I'm sent to. I'm sent to people who are really anointed, that are really fighting witchcraft, that are really being oppressed by demons, and you're going to overcome. This is what the Lord is saying to you. And then we have people that love to come on the live stream and love to pretend and they love to follow me and pretend that they're Christians, but they love to do wickedness in the background. But they themselves have to continue to figure out what's really going on. We have the people that love to come in and test the waters. They test to see if I can really see. They test to see if I can really find you after you chant over my picture and things like that. It's always fun. But don't let Satan deceive you to think you'll win, please. <laughs> God bless you. Okay, Sheba. Shalom, shalom. Shirabayim. Is everyone with me? You cannot be, listen, you can't be strong in God without being confident in your God. If God is with you, literally, nobody can be against you. Nobody can be against you. No one. It doesn't matter what type of aggression that they are giving you because this, look. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord shall lift up a standard. So whatever attack you're enduring, you just have to wait it out. Many people, they faint because they were trusting in their own ability to cling to God. And yet you need to instead just live through God. What does that mean? Your ability to stay with God is not enough, but God's ability to be with you. God's ability to be with you is more than enough. It's not in our ability to withstand an attack, but it's in his ability to give us the grace to withstand the attack. And once that happens, he said that our strength will be renewed. It'll be as it'll be a complete reset. It'll be as if we never got attacked. And God will then strengthen us beyond the attack that we endured. People want the depth of the anointing. Well, guess what? You'll be shot with arrows. You'll be shot with things. You'll be shot with bullets sometimes. I'm telling you, these are things that have happened to me in my dreams. These, these are deep attacks. When you get shot, hey, <laughs> your, the strength of your spirit goes all the way down, it seems like. When you, when, you, when you accidentally have sex in your dream, being honest, this is real things. The strength goes down. You haven't sinned against the Lord. But these are open doors that the, that the devil tries to use to attack you. He said that the enemy will come at night to sow tares. You have to destroy the attack. You call upon the name of the Lord. That he will fill you, renew your strength. It'll be as if, hey, that it never even happened. And you'll realize that your dimension, the stretching of your spirit as you endure. That the next time they try to come, you say, hey, this thing is weak now. It'll be like immunization when they give you shots. That your system will be... You'll say, no, you can't attack me like that again because I've already been through something like that. Anyone who your strength is failing you, we're going to pray and God is going to empower you. We're getting there. Somebody say we're going somewhere. <laughs> Somebody say, ah, we're going somewhere. Shayara <laughs> basatea. I hear you, Prophet Nate. Don't worry. And I'm coming to help you even more. It's just not the time yet. Don't think that I uh, forgot about you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless and praise your holy name. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love how the Lord has set this thing up. Realize I'm still, I'm at home. I normally don't live stream. I'm around the house. I normally don't live stream when I'm home, but I'm around the house. I'm sitting in a car and literally understand that you've come here just to listen. You've come here just to listen because there's substance here. It's not anything fancy. I'm not dressed up. I'm not trying to project anything that I don't have. And if I don't know, I'm not going to tell you that I know. But what I do have is given and you receive it because it comes from Jesus. It's just raw. The people who like the fake and the fancy, they don't like me very much because you can't pretend around me. There's no pretending. <laughs> it's either you got it or you don't. Hallelujah. That's the thing that makes it more pure. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, I'm having a great time, Susan. Amen, Prophet Nate. Thank you. Keramas orobus ayamalandea. 
You say you're only looking for God's word. Well, God bless you, Pastor. Uh, Queen, let me pray for you. You say you're having headaches. Place your, place your, are you still here, Queen? Queen B? Are you still here? Okay, pray, place your hand on your head. Place your right hand on your head. And I'll pray for you. God is going to heal you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shalamas Utundia. I pray now, Father. Lord, take away all the pain now from my head. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that headache be completely healed. Lord, I pray right now that your healing touch would go forward now. Oh, Lord, by your spirit. Lord, I thank you that there's a release of your power now. Lord, as you're touching now, the headache is removed. The headache is removed completely in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that you're doing it. Lord, it is by you and your goodness that you do miracles in our midst. Lord, I thank you for healing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, check it now, Queen. Check it now. Karataya. Amen. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, somebody like this and share this. Somebody else needs to hear this. Oh, you say you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It was powerful, right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody else receive your healing as well. Receive healing in your soul. Receive healing in your emotions. Receive healing now. Receive healing. We're going to continue teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. It's good to have people to walk with and, and help sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. Now understand this. People who are misguided, they're not necessarily uh, always trying to be bad. They're not always necessarily. There's some people that are just flat out wicked. <laughs> yeah, there's people like that. But there's some people that they just be used. And many people are just used. If you can see in the realm of the spirit, if your eyes are open always, you begin to see, wow, the multitudes of demons that are out here to oppress people is crazy and when you truly walk in anointing in a, in a dimension close with God you'll realize that people aren't necessarily bad they're just weak that demons will literally just use them just because they're come, they've come close to where God is realize where God is that's where Satan wants to try to discourage people from going to that's where, that's where Satan wants to control things around you realize in the church building where, where, where people are religious mindsetted, rather than Jesus centered and focused, that's where the most demons are. That's where the most demons are going to be. Their battle is harder than the battle of somebody that's outside. So I said, don't. It's not good to be lukewarm. It's better that you be completely cold. You don't know anything. This and that that I can make you hot. But lukewarm people is the hardest to change. They think they're fine. Till you realize this. Lukewarm, if you're lukewarm, you can't even pray to change anybody's destiny. You can't remove demons from people. No healing happening. There's no prophecy going forward. There's nothing from the master that you can even prove. You can't change anyone's life. You can't even preach the gospel effectively. Because these signs and wonders are supposed to follow you. They're supposed to follow the message that God has given you if God is speaking to you. So you realize even lukewarm people, you're lukewarm because God's not even really speaking. I speak a little bit, kind of. You barely hear anything and you're not changed by it, nor do you really do it. Because when you've come close to God's word, he said that it's fire in your bones. It, it becomes a dimension of fire. That when you embrace that fire, you come close to it. Demon begin to scream. Demon can't re remain in you. When you've come close to him, you've done his word. And when his word has entered you, now all of a sudden... What you're carrying, the infilling of you, becomes too much that demon will begin to say, I don't even want to be in this body anymore. 
I don't want to be in the soul. I don't want to be anywhere around this place. Please let me go. <laughs> let me be released from this place. It's better that I would go to the pit than be in this place. So then you realize how much fire, because demons hate fire. They would rather be in hell fire than be in contact with the fire of God inside of somebody. Because God is all-consuming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those who are misguided are listening to the wrong voices. Whoever you listen to is where you end up in location. There was a time where Jesus was speaking with a lawyer. And Jesus said, and, 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 and the lawyer said, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, what is your reading of it? What is your interpretation? And the lawyer said, he said, well, love God and, and love your neighbor. And Jesus said, mm, you've answered wisely. You've come close to the kingdom of God. Notice that by reason of what he had heard and by reason of how he answered, he was brought, he was, he was indicated to be in a certain location because the kingdom of God is within us so by reason of what that lawyer had heard and he recited his location was given to him he didn't say that Jesus didn't say that he entered the kingdom of God because that lawyer didn't begin to believe in Jesus but he said you've come close <laughs> When Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, what he's saying is just like when I prayed for Queen B. That I had already seen what the Lord would want to do and what was possible. So then it was just at hand that you bring the kingdom out. That the healing power of God that he died for can be brought forward. Are you understanding? It's not saying that you're dying, you go to heaven and it's coming and this and that. What he's saying is right now as you have faith in Jesus... That the kingdom will enter you in its fullness. And you'll have to grow into embracing the kingdom. Why do I say that? Because he says that the kingdom is like leaven. That when it's put into a portion, that it leavens the whole lump. And so the kingdom comes in very small in the beginning. And then it becomes everything in your life. You know, you accept Jesus and you think, oh yeah, I just have Jesus on Sunday. He becomes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then it becomes every moment. And the deeper you go, you realize that layers of demons will try to come to oppress you. This is the reason why Satan comes to sow tears in us. Because if the kingdom of God is within us, the real territory that the enemy wants is in us. If he can block the presence of God in your life, if he can distract you and send demons to oppress you, to keep you from the presence, then, then you can not have peace. He'll, he, he may get you with anxiety. He may get you with depression. He may take up spaces where the presence of God should be, that you'll have to war and fight for your deliverance as God has given it. Yes, it's true that God has delivered us with a great deliverance on the cross. But however, you must enforce that deliverance by living the right way. And day by day, God filling you with more of his spirit. That's why he said, lift up your gates, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And as the king of glory is filling his temple, that's the way that everything will be removed from you. Everything. Karataya. You said that need, you need the addiction of smoking to be, de you need to be delivered from that. Place your hand on your tongue. I'll pray for you again. We'll pray. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ as you're touching your tongue. That God's power and his light will show up on your tongue. May he make it disgusting to you and bitter. In the name of Jesus Christ. May he send fire to cleanse. Any deposits that entered you and remain in you, any spirits of addiction, any spirits of smoking, let that be removed from you. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, may he send his power to you. May he deliver you completely. May he set you free by his spirit and by his spirit alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Karamasotoya. Have a great day, Pastor Lurch. God bless you, sir. Now it's by faith. 
If they try to tell you that you're not delivered, it's a lie. Watch what God is doing. Thank you, Jesus. The reason why we have to be filled with his presence to certain dimensions. He takes us from faith to faith, right? Glory to glory. Is so that you can know. Realize. Oh, shataramaya. Thank you, Jesus. This is why this book was written. John speaks and he says that you would know. <laughs> that you could have assurance of faith. One of the things that's so important as prophetic people and prophets, as I was speaking to the prophetess last night, my wife, was this. That we would know, not that we would it'd be a maybe, but that we would know what's going to happen ahead of time. That's our real assignment, that you would know this is for sure what's happened. This is for sure what's happening now. And this is for sure what's happening in the future. This is the real call. It's not a, well, maybe, might be, guesswork. No, 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 no. That you that it is established by reason of the assurance of faith. <laughs> Amen, Susan. <laughs> Thank you. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands, have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. So this is something tangible. Understand that you must be filled to a place. You must be filled to a place that you begin to handle that which you are receiving from God. I don't know if you're really hearing what I'm saying. When God begins to touch me, it's it's not like it used to be. When, when, when you begin in the prophetic, it be, it's vague. It's like, okay, I think I'm understanding. When you go deeper, hey. And when you continue to go deeper. Let me see. There's a, por a certain portion. Okay, 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 this, this is what I'm saying. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. So Jesus did way more miracles. Way more miracles. I'm sorry, Paulette. We'll pray. I, I'm not sure what that is. Hereditary spastic disease. Hmm. Which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that you, in believing, you may have life in his name that you would have even assurance God bless you prophetess crystal shalom shalom to you that you would have assurance that he is who he is is first and then he he has to fill you to a point that now then you become his witness you become his witness this is the reason for the power of the Holy Ghost, that it strengthens the message of his salvation, strengthens the message of what Jesus has done for you. And the abundance of life that comes is because there will be trials and tribulations. There will be times where the devil will come to fight. But if you have the kingdom at hand right away, you can receive an answer from God. All of that work that you did to grow close to God, it becomes fruitful. It becomes very fruitful. Because now you have received, you've become God's friend to the point he will answer you at all times. He'll show up for you, my dad. When people want to come and fight you. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes, what do they say? They don't know who they're dealing with. <laughs> they may have tried everyone else who said that they served God. But as for you, when they touch you, hey, they find out quick. They say, I thought Christians were not like this. I thought it wouldn't be like this. I thought that. <laughs> and yet when they try you, it's like that. God is really like that. <laughs> Consider this. He said that if you ask anything in my name, it shall be done for you. But I've come to know and come to learn that there's a condition upon this thing. When you grow close to God, you begin to understand the parables. You begin to understand his secrets and his codes. What God is saying here is when heaven has been opened to you. And when you have been cleansed and purged of iniquity and wickedness, when your hands are clean and your heart is pure, 
when demons are removed from you, that the more that you ask in his name, anything, really anything, will be given to you. Anything. This is the reason why Satan is fighting so hard to keep you from breaking through into the light. He's fighting so hard for you to under. He's having people fight each other that are in the same kingdom, supposed to be in the same kingdom, serving together. He's causing all sorts of confusion for this reason. This is why I don't draw close to people. This is why I don't engage the foolishness of these things because that's still low level things. These are still base things, it's small things. You can't be fighting a cross when people underneath us are fighting us to try to pull us down. It doesn't make sense. And anyone who criticizes you cannot manifest the Lord Jesus Christ deeper than you. It doesn't make sense. Why should somebody more blessed than you come and tell you what you're not doing right without showing you how it's done? Therefore, if somebody's telling you that's not how God would do it, then they're underneath your dimension anyways. And they can't help you at all. They can never show you how it's done. They can only tell you that that's not how God would do it. So tell us how God will do it. But they cannot. I need to move into the shade. It's getting toasty. Bear with me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. windows down a bit more. There we go. Okay, Paulette. Place your hand where, where you have pain. Actually, just put it on your stomach. I'll pray for you now. Are you hearing me? me, Paulette. You lay on your stomach to relieve the pain. You cannot walk. Place it on your stomach. We'll pray for you right now. Everybody stretch your hand towards the screen, wherever you are. We're going to pray for Paulette now. Lord, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Paulette, Lord. Lord, we pray that any spirit of infirmity would leave her now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray right now. Send your power. Send your fire, Lord, for cleansing and healing. Lord, we command our bones to awaken at the voice of God. We command anything that is holding her, any illness that is holding her, any ailment, any injury that is holding her. We pray for soul healing now. We command her body to respond to the power of Jesus Christ. Let soul healing happen and let complete healing in our body, restoration of our body. Go forward now as you charge her now with your power. Lord, charge her now. Lord, send your power, send your fire now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your touch be upon her now. Let your touch be upon her now that every pain is withering away. Every pain is withering away. Let there be full mobility of whatever joints, whatever, whatever limbs, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, raise her up, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, tell us how you're doing, Paulette. Karabaya, karito show ya. Oku suru wasai lamas des. Kuromu sotura masate ya. In Jesus' name. Amen. Is the pain gone?
Let us know if the pain is gone. Lerana sati rabakiam. Let us know, let us know, let us know. Rekanderit aya. Rekisat aya. If you can, while we're waiting for Paulette's response, uh, continue to like this for me, please. Can you pray? Can you please pray for my son? He's confused with his identity. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus. Those demons that are messing him up. That are messing with his mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that he will be loose. That he will be loose now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, do that thing now. Send your angel, Lord, to war on behalf of your son. In Jesus' name. Is the pain gone, Paulette? Let us know, let us know, let us know. God is doing something right now. God is doing something right now. Hallelujah. God is doing it right now. God is working and He's with us. Karataya. Queen B said that the Lord healed her from uh, headaches earlier. Hallelujah. God is moving with his power and his healing power already. And he's doing something. And he's doing something now. Alleviation is happening now. Bless you, Jesus. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Rinkanda rebe gara de karanaya. Ropus or robus or maim. Sarana kinkarama kure my saitea. I guess this is some, some people's favorite time. When the Lord says there's enough teaching and we begin to pray. We're going to pray now. Hallelujah. We're going to begin to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, establish your connection here. Lord, establish your connection and let it be secure that your people can receive what they have come to receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be no hindrance, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, let there be a touch upon us, Lord. Lord, you are the King of glory and we worship you all together now. Lord, we worship you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we worship you now. Lord, we praise your holy name, God. Lord, we ask for mercy, Lord. Forgiveness of sins, O oh Lord. Cleansing and purity. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. That you would send, O oh Lord, your mercy to your people. Show your light. King of glory, I see you in our midst here now. Lord, I thank you that you're with your people so much, that you care for them and love them so much, Lord. Lord, I pray that anyone who is dealing with witchcraft attacks, we break it in the name of Jesus. Those charms that they fashion against you, we destroy those chains. We destroy those charms in the name of Jesus Christ. Let those rituals come down and be destroyed. Let those rituals by night be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let those candle working that they try to bring against you be scattered completely in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Hey, Ramas in the name of Jesus Christ let it come down now let them come down now Lord by your power you reign and rule let not the rebellious exalt themselves Father exalt yourself today arise O Lord and let your enemies be scattered Father I thank you O Lord I praise your holy name Adonai Lord, we bind every demonic activity. We bind every curses that are trying to fly now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we destroy it completely. We destroy it completely, Lord. Send your glory. Oh, Lord, send your shining brightness. You are the King of glory. And your power and your might is unmatched, oh, Lord. Lord, I thank you that impartation, even as I'm praying for them now, strengthening, there is strengthening that is happening for them. But they need healing. Let healing come forward now. Lord, where they need deliverance, let deliverance power, let the dunamis power be activated upon them now. Let their spiritual sensitivity be activated and intensified now. Father, intensify your presence in our space. Lord, King of glory, you're worthy to be praised, Lord God. Lord, send your light. 
Lord, those who had small light, increase the light, Lord. Lord, those who had small gifts, Lord, I pray that they, they would grow into their gift, Lord. They think that their gift is just one and it's small. But Lord, let them grow into the gifts which you have imparted to them, which you've given to them in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Send your fire, Lord. Lord, somebody who had, had, had began to dim, the enemy had attacked them, began to dim their fire. Lord, send fire to that altar. Send fire to their altar. Send fire to that altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, increase the discernment even for your servant prophet Nate. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that his eyes would continue be open by reason of your light by reason of your light lord lord i pray that there will be filling now whoever needs anointing i see it being poured out from the presences of god lord send your anointing now send your oil now in the name of jesus christ send your oil father lord send your oil lord Lord, send your oil, Lord. Lord, I thank you that this altar is an altar of solution. Father, I thank you that the fire that you placed upon this altar cannot be quenched. It cannot be quenched by dark magic. It cannot be quenched by black magic. And no sorcerer can overcome. By reason of this presence, witchcraft must be destroyed. I pray that it will begin to touch. It begin to touch your people, Father. Let them be drawn near to you. Your words says draw near unto you that god would draw near to us but we fashion our hearts to draw near to you god that you would draw near to us lord we need you inside of us lord we need to be consumed by you father father by your glory father by your fire lord i pray let her be consumed completely now in the name of jesus christ let there be touching now father there's someone who needs healing in their mind lord i pray that healing would go forward by the streams of your glory Lord, by what you have done for us, the, 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 the crucifixion that you endured for us, you were torn to pieces for us, Lord. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that there will be restoration to somebody, somebody dealing with deep depression, somebody dealing with anxiety. Let it be dispersed now by you, Prince of Peace, by you, King of Glory. Lord, let it be completely destroyed now. Lord, let it be completely destroyed now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let somebody receive as D is typing now. You said wholeness in Jesus' name. Somebody, let your faith make you whole now. Jesus, thank you, Lord, King of glory, that you come near to us. Lord, I thank you for your refining fire. Lord, I thank you that no charms can work against our minds. Lord, I thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear, a spirit of anxiety, but you've given us power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, we love you with all of our being, as your commandment says. Lord, we're not ashamed of you and your message. Lord, we praise you, Adonai. You are the king of everything. You are the king of glory. We love you and we praise your holy name. Lord, there's somebody that needs the baptism. Let them be baptized with your fire. Lord, someone who has never spoken tongues, let the bubbling come up out of them. Lord, send your fire. Send your spirit, Lord. Lord, you're still sitting on the throne, Lord. Lord, you have arisen to come towards us, Lord. And we bless you and praise you for it, Lord. Somebody who needs healing in their heart, who has experienced a betrayal in the past seven months, I'm seeing. I pray that there will be soul healing in them, in their heart, Lord. Let there be healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be healing, Lord. Lord, you're so kind and merciful to us. Let now all the house of Israel say that the Lord is merciful and God's mercy endures forever. Lord, your mercy endures forever. Lord, the flower fades, the grass withers, but your word endures forever. Fill us with this word. Lord, knowing you, the true living God, is eternal life. And Lord, that glory which Jesus had with you from the beginning, which you restored with him. Lord, restore us with it. That we would all be one as Jesus had prayed. And Lord, we know that everything that Jesus prays, you do. Because he does everything that pleases you, Father. Lord, make us one with his glory. Lord, make us one with his glory now. Lord, those who have fallen and stumbled, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
But in you, Jesus, we are restored to that glory. We are restored to that abundance of life. I pray now in the powerful name of Jesus Christ that, Lord, your glory would shine. Let it shine. Every evil arrow being fought and shot against my heart, let it go back where it came from, you wicked arrow. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, Lord, your glory, let it consume us all together now. Let your glory consume us all together now. Impartation of glory now. Somebody receive it now. Somebody receive the touching now. Somebody receive the hand of God coming upon you now. Somebody receive the presence of God coming upon you now. Somebody receive the empowerment of your spirit. Somebody receive it now. There goes the power. There goes the anointing. There goes the clarity of mind. Doors of realms are being opened. If you can see already, you'll realize you'll begin to see now. You'll realize you're receiving the grace now. Your dreams will become clear. Your dreams are becoming clear. May God make you a temple, his holy temple, the place of his glory, the place of his habitation, where the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon you bodily as a dove. Let him come now. Let him come now in the powerful name. For it is written that he said, a greater one is coming after me. That one, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That cleansing fire sweeping through you. That chambers of your inner being, the realms of your inner being, your soul, which were unclean, which were darkened by Satan. Satan placing something in you, whether it be by entertainment, whether it be by sinful desire. Let fire begin to burn this thing now. He said that he would refine you with fire and with laundering soap. Let you be washed now, purged now by silver. Let your silver and let the gold be purified. May the treasures that God placed in you be purified now by his refining fire. By his refining fire in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, that your fire is true. That your fire burns and cleanses now. Let there be cleansing now in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Kurupus anali mesindirian, ros nikila, soropu sokundiri taila, soromu sodori amaya, shh, hotele tele taila, shh, hotele taila. Somebody is receiving abundance of peace now. Shh, hotele taila, shh, hotele bayime bebekia, loromu soku bayime, soroto soku renaime. Shoroto sokura mayime, shikate kikande rekinde dia. That demon cannot remain in your life. That witchcraft spirit being released against you cannot remain. It cannot remain in your life. With your hands lifted to heaven, it cannot remain in your life. Oh, begin to receive from God. Continue receiving from Jesus. Continue to receive from Jesus. Shilara makuru buku dure nikala ne satura masaya. Though they are strengthened together. Though they form plans against us, they will not prevail. Every plan being formed against us, even ahead of time, it fails in Jesus' name. We decree and declare, stretch your right hand up to heaven and say, Lord, empower me by your right hand. Lord, let your power speak for me. Lord, let your power and speak for me. Let your blood speak for me. Lord, empower me against the enemy of my soul. And let me not be foolish, but let me be wise in these last days. Let me be wise in these last days. Strengthen me, Father. As the oil is pouring upon you, as I'm seeing now, say, Lord, let my horn be exalted. Lord, let my horn be exalted. Let your horn of authority be exalted. As David's horn was exalted above his enemies, Oh, he never lost one battle. 66 battles he fought, and he lost none of them. May your horn be exalted like that, by reason of the anointing you're receiving. When the enemy comes against you, he shall never prevail. In Jesus' holy name, let the anointing speak. Let the anointing speak in the name of Jesus Christ. It is written, <laughs> as I'm teaching you now, stay in a meditative spirit. It is written, day unto day utter speech. <laughs> and
and by night there is no place where their voice is not heard. Understand that there's many voices in the realm of the Spirit. There's many voices. I pray you would have discernment to understand. I pray you would have discernment to decipher which one is the voice of the Lord and the spirits which come from God. I said spirits which come from God. This is why it's written, test the spirits, not spirit. Test the spirits to see which ones are from God. By reason of what is in you, it should, it must be, and not should be, it must be that God is so much in you that you'll say, this one is like God. When the angel of the Lord visits you, you must say, this one is speaking by the spirit of the living God because the spirit of God is in me. That you know that your spirit must be lit up. Karadaya. Understand what I'm saying. You cannot test what is of God if God is not enough in you. That's not how it works. There's people that are far, so far away from God. And they'll say, this one is false, but this one is true. Because it's how their mind has fashioned them according to appearance and what they like and accept according to outward appearance. But those who are spiritual, when your spirit hears the voice of God, even if you don't like that person, you'll say, this one's speaking from God. Because he has, it's the same spirit that is within me. I don't agree with everything that they think or say. But the spirit is the same. Realize even the apostles had deferring messages. Can you say that Apostle Paul was fake and Apostle Peter was, was true and they clashed heads sometimes? No, they're both from God. <laughs> Consider the foolishness of the church not to be filled to the point that they could say, I may not like that guy, but it is of God. Kiran iritos kotaya. The scripture is wit written in a way that you'll see it from one dimension where you are with God. And when you ascend to another dimension, you see another aspect of truth by reason of his light shining. You'll see another image of what is written there. And you'll say, oh, I didn't know it was that deep. And it's like that with every dimension that you go deeper with God. This is why it says that we're seated in heavenly places, not heavenly place, not one place. This is why you see one person prophesying so deep and another person just barely prophesying. And they're both of God. It says heavenly places. <laughs> the way that we get closer, and I'm, I'm tying it all together. God is tying it all together. The way that you go deeper is by sacrifice. Jesus said, when you take up this work, count the cost. That one person may have shallow sacrifice, so they remain in the shallow end with God. And this is where jealousy and strife come up when they see the deeper person who has sacrificed much has gone deeper with God, their whole life even. Consider that this is the reason why the disciples, the 72, left Jesus. No root in them. But Jesus turns and says to Peter, shall you leave as well? Peter said, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The depth of sacrifice was deeper. He said, Lord, we have left all. What shall we receive? When it was said that a rich man seldom can enter the kingdom of God. And it's hard that it's easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than to enter in the kingdom of God. He's saying that somebody who's already rich, it's hard for you to forsake everything and say, God, I trust you with all. I'll leave it at that. There's some deeper things that I want to say concerning that, but I'll leave it there. Those who are sacrificed, listen, listen, this is why the, the gods were so angry because the sacrifice, they wanted to give sacrifice. You come close to God with sacrifice. You come deeper in covenant with sacrifice. The enemy is fighting you giving tithes to any church. The devil will begin to fight anything that you love too much that you can't give to God. He'll begin to fight you there. I'm telling you whether it's money, food, time, prayer time, worship, uh, adoration, whatever it is. The enemy is trying to steal that therein because he knows the power within. Listen to this carefully. I will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
So God is showing you by reason of worship, when David began to worship and praise him, that the tormenting spirit left Saul completely. Deliverance happens from depression and oppressive spirits, heavy spirits, by your praise. Oh, bless you. Because the praises of the God, literally the Lord, he said he lives, he inhabits the praises of his people. So God is invited. His presence is invited when we say, Lord, you are God. We worship you, Adonai. You are the God of everything. You are Lord Most High. You are El Elyon. There is nobody like you. The presence shows up deeply and intensifies that demon spirits can't control it and handle it. The enemy is looking to enter you. Take the kingdom of God. Take territory there. That whereby you'll be you'll be blocked. I don't know anyone who, when they are bogged down, can enter the glory of God. It's not happening. When sins are weighing you down and iniquity is weighing you down, there's no way you can ascend into the heavenly realms. There's no way. It's not happening. When you begin to be uh, uh, shot by arrows and witchcraft is oppressing you, all these things, that's why they do those things that you would give up. But by reason of a sacrifice, you can become cleansed. And cleansing can happen. And God can strengthen, and God can strengthen, <laughs> foolish comments, <laughs> uh, we bind your perversion in Jesus' name. Back to sin. <laughs> when, when you give sacrifice, God shows up. He requires and he takes you to deeper dimensions when you give, <laughs> when you give sacrifice. You understand it? Is, is everyone with me? <laughs> is everyone with me? <laughs> you said, what do you mean by sacrifice? I thought obedience is better than sacrifice. Consider what was said to Abraham. Rise up and go and take your son and sacrifice him to me. Abraham goes there. Abraham goes there. And he's about to kill his son. No, stop. Take the ram. I know that you love me. So understand that it was his obedience that led him to the place of sacrifice. It's better for you to obey the Lord and sacrifice rather than you to disobey the Lord. To sin against his word and say, let me keep part of the sheep for myself like Saul did and exalt myself with pride in myself and sacrifice this thing to God. No. You disobeyed the command. So the, the command of God brings you to a place of sacrifice. You don't know what God has crucified me to give up. And he has crucified me to give things up. So I can prophesy to you and pray for you deeply. That you'll really receive your healing. You'll really receive your deliverance. You'll really receive. The, 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 the difference between the fake and the real. The difference between the fake and the real is sacrifice. Are you really living the life of sacrifice or no? Are you playing church? This is why I live a life like John the Baptist. I don't care who's coming, but God will send them. I don't care who's coming, this and that. I was in the church building. They hated me for my raw prophecy. I said, why are there demons on, on the wall when I come in here? Why do I see snakes on the wall? Why do I see scorpions on the floor? Why do I see all these things? The presence is much deeper that the king of glory shows up in my own house than in here. This is unclean. We need to get it together. They didn't like me very much for that. I began to tell people, you're sinning in this way, sinning like this, this and that. They didn't like, that doesn't make you popular. Clean it up. My prophecy is not so that I'm glorified. It's so Jesus is glorified. It's so you actually come close to the king of glory. I don't care about the claps for men. The same people clapping for you will kill you. The same people that you think, oh, they're going to love me and this and that. Listen to me. Those same people will be the same people first to betray you. Don't trust in men. And don't trust in the foolish hearts of men. Even when they're unpurified. Sure enough, Satan will find opportunity to find that same Judas who is casting devils with you. And they'll betray you. And it's happened to me many times. If you can't understand this dimension, then you don't need to be around this dimension. That's why I don't contact people. With this. Your DMs are closed. Yes, because crazy people would come in my comments cursing me and doing witchcraft there. Telling me, oh, you just this and that. This. According to outward appearance, yet you don't know me. Why? How can you see people doing the, the things of God and you begin to condemn them and attack them unless you were sent of Satan? 
Why are you jealous? Just do what you're called to do. How can you look across you and think that you're doing what God is telling you? You're not even looking up. You're looking across. This person's doing such and such. <laughs> Why do you care? If what I'm saying is so wrong, but people are receiving miracles and this and that, and you're doing what God told you to do and nothing's happening, you should check yourself. Why is nothing happening? The Bible is literally written to say this. Then you realize this when you begin to do what's actually written. When you begin to do what's actually written, it's a big time problem with people. It's a big time problem with demons. May the connection be established in Jesus' name. May the connection be secure in Jesus' name. May God's message go forward in Jesus' name. So, I hope you're hearing me now. Um, signs and wonders follow us. All these things happen. He said they harden their heart like Pharaoh, exactly. They prefer. They prefer to prop themselves up as somebody that they're nobody. Realize we're just nobodies. But Jesus is everything. And when Jesus actually shows up, when you've drawn near to actually be that place, to actually be that place of blessing, that's when they're upset. Fifi said we should be preaching salvation, not seed or prosperity. I preach it all. He said the whole counsel of God should be preached. Seed and sacrifice is good. It's not of the devil. Only the devil will tell you it's bad when you give to God and you give to God's priests and people. That doesn't even make sense. Sure enough, you do what your boss tells you at work. You take care of your boss. You give gifts to your family. People who are, who are, who are giving you blessings. Why shouldn't you take care of your priest? You take care of your doctor who heals you. Why shouldn't you take care of the person who's laboring in the presence of God? Why can't you take care of them? Listen to me, my prophet, my prophet, I take care of him. I make sure that it's a, if anyone doesn't give to his ministry, I will still give because God had commanded it. That is obedience by sacrifice. You don't know how much I give. I give thousands. I give thousands. You think I'm on here taking money? Listen, the money that people give me is not replenishing me anything. I work, uh, I'm all the time in the truck. I never basically live stream from around here. I don't live stream around my house. I spend my time with my family and I make a sacrifice to continue to work because I know. <laughs> because I know. <laughs> that it's important that you give you can't be selfish and anyone who wants to increase you have to give upward you give to people that don't need it that's how you enter their dimension of giving then you give down you give down as well you give to people who are less fortunate i just saw a man of god speaking about this and this is deep in the bible it says that you give to those who are less fortunate and god sustains your health you give to people upward to enter the dimension of giving and enter that dimension of wealth you give up for wealth, you give down for health. <laughs> I understand it. <laughs> now people are accused all the time. It's 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 foolishness. How are you accusing of anything? He said money isn't everything. No, it's not. It's a very small thing. It's just a tool to be used. Money should be serving you. Are you using your money to serve God with you? Because if not, then you're in iniquity. You're wrong. You're in idolatry. Just being honest. I know what I'm saying. I had everything taken from me. More and more, God is crucifying me. I'm not telling you something I'm not living. And the evidence that I'm living it is when you speak to God, He does it. The evidence that you're doing right, you're in righteousness, is that when you speak to Him, He comes with results. That's why Jesus said, For which one of these works, for which one of these works do you crucify me? So not for your works, for what you said. But realize what he said was should have been empowered, that it is the truth by reason of the works. 
The works are supposed to strengthen the message which God has given you. My message is not everybody's message. Everybody's different. But it's still a salvation message. Give your life to Jesus. But the way I do things is strange. It's not like everyone else. Everyone has their own dimension. I hope you're understanding. That doesn't mean the message is fake. <laughs> okay. We're, we're glad for you, Fifi. <laughs> we're glad for you. But I perceive there's something in you that wants to oppose the message. And, and it wants to cause confusion. Prophet, my ears will ring sometimes randomly. Does that mean witchcraft? No, it means pay attention because there's an angel close to you that is getting your attention. I know somebody online that said that it, it means witchcraft is being done. No. And God bless that prophetess. I, I love her. <laughs> but that's not what that means. When witchcraft is done, it's not going to come with freedom or a message. The ear ringing is that you would perceive something is happening and someone is appearing to me. It's almost like a doorbell. Daniel said, can you please address my question? I want to learn. I need to come back to my first love. I don't know if I'm dealing with a stronghold. You're dealing with spirits. You need deliverance, Paulette. And God is beginning that process now. All right, Daniel, let's see. Let's see what the question is. <laughs> we haven't even talked about prophetic codes yet. So that's what I felt in my spirit, but people have said witchcraft, so I want to clarify. Like, yeah, amen. No, that's not what that means. <laughs> Will this teaching be uploaded? Yeah. Go to YouTube at Assembly of the Prophets and I'll upload this. Why did God do what he did to the Canaanites? Because the Canaanites were a bloodline which was defiled by the fallen angels. So they were giants in defiled blood where Satan was trying to mess up uh, Messiah coming. So they had to be wiped out. What about dreaming washing clothes? That means God is cleansing your garments. Um... Or desires to cleanse your garments. And that purity is coming. When God changes your garments in the room of the spirit. Different authority happens to you. Understand that you. He says that the Holy, when the Holy Spirit comes from on high. He will clothe you with power. So anything that is touching your body in the room of the spirit. Becomes an extension of you. Consider that's why it says that there will be healing in his wings. When Messiah comes in the book of Malachi. And when Jesus came, the woman, knowing that prophecy about the Messiah, comes and touches the wings of his garment. He comes and touches his tassels on his prayer shawl. And when they touched his shawl, power was released from him. How can you touch somebody's clothing and power is released from them? Then you realize clothing is an extension of your spirit. That's why you don't give anyone your clothes. Because witches want to use the blood and the sweat and things collected by its touching you to try to bind your spirit. I know I just said a lot right there. D, can you explain dream of white snake, please? I have prophetic codes in, <laughs> in my thing. Let me see here. Let us begin to see what that says. White snake. Ah, uh, white snake means that the enemy, the plan of the enemy, is to try to bring oppression in your soul uh, by sexual abuse. That's what a white snake means. And if you see it inside of you and you've experienced it many times in the prophetic code, it means <laughs> it means that um, that that spirit, it, it needs to leave you. That it needs to leave you. Olivia said, how do you know all this? Because God appears to me and spoke to me. I'm not a fake apostle. I'm not a fake prophet. This is things for real. 
God called me. I began hearing at six years old. I began hearing demons. I began seeing vision. It's for real. They love to say everybody's fake. Not everybody. I saw my friend in spirit in my dream. What does it mean? I don't know what your friend is. Who's your friend? It depends if your friend is alive or dead. That these are completely different things. And today, since we're doing prophetic code, I also do dreams. Nate, if you have dreams, Prophet Nate. <laughs> okay, Crystal says, uh, Prophetess Crystal said, Prophet, at times you'll wear your prayer shawl. That on the, is that on the Sabbath? What's the significance? When I want to pray deeply, it has some things attached um, to it that are powerful. Um, if you'll notice that it's dirty, it's because I've put oil on it and I've really used it. And I don't like to wash it too much. I like to keep the anointing on it. Um, the reason I wear it is because realize that people will say it binds you to the law. Well, who's the law? Jesus. <laughs> when you look in the realm of the spirit, a, a prayer shawl is literally what it is is a mantle. When they say mantles are falling from heaven, it looks like a prayer shawl. I just put on my mantle. But there's different significances. Remember I told you about altars and how to make one to God. So there's something else that happens when I put it on as well. But we'll leave it at that. Okay. Brother, why have my dreams been closed off? I used to dream, but now I don't anymore. That means somebody has is doing oppression on you, probably witchcraft. To make sure that your eyes are not open so that you cannot contact God. That means you need to pray. It means you need to pray more and strengthen your spirit that your eyes will be open. He said this. He said that when your eye is single, your body will be filled with light. Your body will be filled with light. So realize that he says, send out your truth and your light and it will lead me into your holy tabernacle. And to, David is talking about the experience of God's light filling him from his head to his feet, his whole spirit being filled with light. Then he appears in heaven and begins to see the things in the temple. This is not physical. This is spiritual language, prophetic language. How do you think he's writing the Psalms? He's filled with the spirit. All of a sudden he begins to enter into deep dimension with God that he begins to prophesy the Messiah hell yeah they pierced my side I'm like a worm all these things that Jesus is going to say David is writing it down <laughs> it's a deep prophetic realm that you'll begin to enter to when your body is full of light but understand the confusion of Satan nowadays Satan nowadays wants you to be consumed with entertainment so demons will enter your eyes Foolishness, carnal music will enter your ears so you won't be able to enter in the way you need to with God. That you'll still remain dull. That your senses will be dull. You'll realize how real this thing is when you begin to hear people's conversations. When you begin to read their thoughts. You literally will see it like a picture book. When people's lives are literally explained and opened to you in visions. You'll say, this thing's for real. This is the reason why they call it television. To keep you away. From seeing the real visions. People used to love. Oh, they used to love seeing. It just like a picture. Just like a screen. In your eyes. But now they put a screen in front of your eyes. <laughs> so that you won't be able. He said you know that you get visions. But no dreams. Uh huh. That just means that you continue to pray. That your communication with God. Because realize at night time. You begin to discern what is already happening. And what will happen quickly. Soon. That's the reason for dreams. God is showing you something. When you f see yourself being attacked, you're either getting attacked right now or you're about to be attacked by the enemy. That's what God is trying to show you. Because perhaps your senses were not strong enough to understand what's happening while you're awake. There's a place where you can stand. The holy hill of Zion. I'm giving prophetic things today. I don't know who's appreciating. Let's get the likes up. <laughs> Where you can stand in a certain place. And when you are in your right standing with God and righteousness. That you 
won't be able to turn off the visions. Anytime you speak to him, your eyes will just be open to see. You'll begin to perceive too much. You'll begin to, it would just be so easy for you. This is where Satan is afraid. Because when you begin to be able to do that, you can destroy the oppression of the enemy easily. And this is where, this is where, this is the place where you, when you go there, the lesser prophets will be jealous of you. The lesser men and women of God will begin to be jealous and begin to attack you. Because they won't understand. They'll think it's witchcraft. They'll think it's sorcery. Because it's at a deeper dimension than them, what they understand. They thought that what they had was the ultimate. When you show them there's a deeper way, when you show them there's a more excellent way, they get angry. Instead of being humble to say, how, how is it actually done? Because realize the Elijahs, the Jesuses, the, the Moseses, they didn't look like what people think. It's not what people think. It's the same person that you're writing off. It's the same people you doubted them for too long. <laughs> it says when Jesus came, it says that there was nothing physically that could you could look at him and say, this is the Messiah. There was nothing appealing or attracting, uh, attractive about him. That's what the Bible says about him. <laughs> so that physically people would not know. Realize if they knew, they wouldn't have crucified him. This is all scripture, everything I'm saying. He said if they would have known he was the Lord of glory, they wouldn't have crucified him. Amen. I am surely being attacked. The Lord has done such a healing in my body. The enemy is angry. Amen. May the en enemy remain angry. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I realized this, though. I talked about this, and I'm going to talk about it again. I talked about it last week. I'll talk about it again. The grip of Satan is actually when he attacks you and hurts you and harms you before you were wise enough to protect your soul, to understand, that, that he would get you emotionally moved upon what he does. If the devil is angry, I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't care. When people are angry with me or they think certain thing and they say certain thing, that's fine. Have your opinion. You know where to take it, to the outhouse. Take it to the dream, please. As my old mentor, Prophet Vince, used to say, <laughs> why don't you go jump in a lake? <laughs> people used to be offended. Ah, it was the real thing. Everything the man said came to pass. Listen to me closely. It doesn't matter what they do. The rejection may hurt for a while. When you go deep with God, people will be upset. They will be angry. It will be the same leaders. They invited you to minister in their church. They'll say, mm, I didn't know he was that deep. I wanted to be the one above him. How will you be above me? I came in a dimensions ahead of you that you did not perceive. I came to tell you this is what God is going to do. Clean up everything in your church. I came for judgment and I told you that from the beginning. God will judge you if you don't listen to what he's saying. Clean it up, this and that. Destruction is coming. They don't listen. That's okay. I'm moving forward. God will give you mercy if you do it his way. That's the whole message. Continuously. It's the whole message. Receive his mercy and his love before he has to destroy you. And he has to hurt you so that you'll obey him now. Because God doesn't want to destroy his children. Why would God want to destroy? You realize that prophets who, who say these And they want the judgment. Listen. You need to check the heart. And that's why you can't prophesy to people accurately. It's because you don't want their best for them. So people who proclaim judgment and sometimes happen, doesn't happen, this and that. Judgment is going to come anyways. That doesn't make you a prophet. What makes you a prophet is saying, I see the oppression of the enemy. We don't want this to happen. Let's stop this. This is when you were hurt, this and that. These events are going to come to pass. This is what God wants to bring to you in your life. That's what makes you a prophet. Because you love people. That's what you'll... you'll listen... Some of you don't understand the molding and the process of the inner man, the spirit, what God has to do to somebody to prophesy like this. I'm being honest with you. It's painful. Then after the crucifixion, he'll glorify himself through your temple. And it's not for you to say, look at me. I'm one of the greatest prophets. It's for you to then glorify the king of glory. It doesn't matter if people think I'm big or small. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. Because you come to a place of death, you realize that it's him who lives through you. I understand it. Yes, it's painful for the rejection. It's painful the oppression. The warfare continuously. The warfare against my family is crazy. The witchcraft that I've endured for so long is crazy. All of the things that God had used to strengthen me. 
It's crazy. It's beyond what you know. It's beyond what I'm willing to say. <laughs> it's literally been insane. But that's the reason why the life of the spirit must come through. Because it's all about the results. God is serious about his, his calling for you. He's serious about his souls. He's serious about his message. So realize that this is why your family must reject you. This is the reason why people must hate you for a time. They must strip you down to nothing. So that you realize it's not about you. So that Jesus Christ can come through. And you can begin to touch the people that are actually assigned to your life. And that you can actually send people. People will go to heaven by reason of your sacrifice. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. I know my childhood friend. He died before his time. He died fighting me. But I preached the message and he's in heaven. There's another one that was fighting me. And he went to hell. I know. <laughs> God told me ahead of time. When I saw my last friend, I said, this might be the last time I see you, but I knew what God would do. He said, no, I'll see you again. Yeah, but not here. You got shot in your neck. You got shot in your chest. Whatever happened, he got shot and he died. The other one, when I preached, he said, I want to punch you right now. He's manifesting demons. But I believe the angel of the Lord stopped him from touching me. And when he blasphemed God, he called him Cinderella. He stopped believing in Cinderella. I heard the Lord say, next time he plays with my name, I'm sending him to the pit. And nine months later, he overdosed on cocaine. So understand this thing happens very quickly. And that's when I was beginning to prophesy very deeply in the streets. I was homeless at the time. And the Lord began to open my eyes with encounters that were beyond anything that I had ever uh, experienced, even when I was a young boy. When he began to show me vision. But this time was deeper because it was now the time to begin my ministry. And I'm telling you, hundreds of people got saved. Everywhere I went, I was just prophesying to them. Just raw prophecy. I had a bullhorn even. I was preaching the gospel. Whether people liked it or not, you weren't stopping this boldness. But that time is past. Now it's time for me to teach. That people will go deeper in a way that they can receive. I still talk to people from time to time, prophesy wherever I can. You can't stop the gift. You can't stop the stream of God speaking. But I know my set place. People need to know their set place. You need to know where you're called to be. Just because other people evangelize all the time doesn't mean that God's calling you to do that. Doesn't mean that you're called to be a pastor over a church and that's not for everybody. You need to know where God has sent you directly. And I know that God has called me to raise up prophetic people, the unchurched people, people dealing with demons and real oppressions of witchcraft. That's what God is calling me. To strengthen the prophets. This is what this is about. Everyone else who wants to throw stones in this and that. You'll find yourself opposing God. And it's never worked out for anyone doing that. Being honest. It's like the funniest thing. <laughs> because it says the Lord sits there and laughs. Oh, they restricted me now. Somebody tagged me and restricted me. It's not suitable for... People, this and that. Regulated goods contact. Okay, of course. So now the enemy's angry, wants to restrict the life because we're telling truth. <laughs> this is foolishness. Uh, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kira tayara masaya. God is great and he is mighty and there's no one like him. Hmm. You know the king is coming back soon, right? He's coming soon. And day by day, what he is calling us to do, just be attentive to what he's saying and to begin to embrace his shift. There's people that I'm speaking to right now. You're going to begin to work miracles that you've never seen before. You've never seen them and they will come from your own hands, and your own spirit. There's things that you'll begin to say that you had never perceived before and they will come into your own spirit. 
you'll begin to see the kingdom of heaven like never before. Somebody begin to lift your hands. Somebody begin to lift your hands as we're meditating here. There's things that are about to happen. God is about to empower his people. Not the people who are religious, want to restrict the spirit of God, but people who want to see his glory. When God sent me to this earth, one of the deepest encounters and the most important encounter I have to tell you is this. That just like the prophets in the Bibles, that's extra deep, Olivia. Chai. <laughs> just like in the Bible, they talk about the kingdom. I must tell you the kingdom that I saw. And when the temple is set up in the thousand year reign, when Jesus Christ comes back to the earth, I saw multitudes of people gathering, just like the scripture says, many people coming to worship him, standing there. And he was bright in his glory. Okay. You could barely even see him. You could, I couldn't even see his face. That's how bright he was. And when he stood there, the glory emanating from him, the power that emanated from him as you're lifting your hands you begin to enter the same encounter and as i was perceiving him there i knew he had full reign there's no there's no opposing him at that point listen to me you must be a fool to think that you can with you can oppose the king and survive and there was people that came whether they came from the east or west i don't know my spirit is telling me from the east May the connection be secured. This is important. And when they came, they wanted to fight and try to overthrow the king. And when the king stood up from his throne, <laughs> whether he, this was a long while ago, this was years ago, I forget whether he snapped his finger, whether he lifted his hand, I don't know. But when the king did this thing, they turned into dust. And by the release of his power, everyone bowed and hit their knees and began to worship him. And it was as if a thickness just came over everyone and began to bow and worship him. There's no way you can oppose the king at this time. His strength is immeasurable. There will be no way that you can fight against his rulership. This is why it's written. Where are those people that didn't want me to rule in front of them? Come so I can kill them. Come so I will slaughter them right here. He's, Jesus is not playing. His might, if, listen, <laughs> if you think his apostles and prophets would do the crazy things, imagine Paul saying, in my presence, I know what I'll do. Since you love sexual morality, you won't repent for taking your, your, your father's wife. When you're all in my presence, I will kill you, that, you're, that you can be saved and go to heaven. If Paul the apostle was given that dimension, how much scarier is the God of that dimension? You think it's something small. The Lord is worthy to be feared. <laughs> it's a reason why they call him terrible. <laughs> it's, there's a reason. Hey. And it's best that we would be on his good side. What will be the fate of these people who want to continue to blaspheme and mock and oppose him? It's a scary thing. The Bible says it's a scary thing to fall in the hands of the living God. The day of the Lord is great and terrible. Who will endure it? So we bless the Lord that we've received his mercy. Because really what Jesus has saved us from is not only hell. He saved us from the wrath of himself. He saved us from the wrath of his father. They'll cry out and they'll say, let these rocks fall upon me. <laughs> let the cave come in that you'll hide us from, from the Holy One and his father. What? <laughs> so they'd rather be crushed by giant stones than deal with the judgment of God and his father. What? <laughs> Imagine what people are saying. They will say this. It, this, is, this is scripture. This is in the book of Revelation. Some people swear they know God and that they can just mock him and do it. Ah, you don't know this man. You don't know him. You're playing. <laughs> so we laugh. We try to make it lighthearted because God is lighthearted. But it pains him at, at the same time because he wants, he wants to save everyone. It pains him to crush his creation. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray one more time as I'm losing battery. Uh, like this and share this. If you're not subscribed, if you're not following, follow. Go to YouTube at Assembly of the Prophets. Hallelujah. Go hang out with the family there. We're going to pray one more time. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to prophesy today. The Lord commanded me not to, but soon we'll do prophetic where we'll say, what will happen to me, part two. And we'll begin to speak into people's futures because I want you to be, and God wants you to be established in where you're going. Also, please don't be upset with me that I don't come on often. I don't spend a lot of time with my family. I'm always working for myself and not stealing from people or being a con man grifter as some people <laughs> love to call me in my ministry. This thing is for real, please. <laughs> I know that I, I, I'll have to provide for this ministry. And when we get the building, please come visit us and I'll tell you where it is and we'll all worship God together from that place. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord, and praise your holy name. Lord, magnify yourself today. Lord, we worship you because you are God most high, and there is no other God besides you. Lord, every other idol falls flat when you show up in your light. Lord, show up with your might and your strength for your people. Lord, there's someone that is trusting in their marriage to be sustained, keep the purity of their marriage. Lord, I pray that they will be solidified and strengthened therein, and that household will be secured. Father, there's somebody that's trusting in you for a promotion, exaltation, deliverance. Somebody wants to receive deliverance from spirits. Lord, I pray that your hand would go forward and your breath to destroy them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Prophetess Crystal said she's surprised that I'm home. Me too. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray. As your word says that you will destroy your enemies by the brightness of your coming and by your breath. Lord, send your breath now to sweep through, Lord, everyone's temple who needs deliverance. Let every evil spirit, every evil breath that has come upon them be overshadowed by the holiness of your breath now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for the infilling and the indwelling of your spirit. Oh, let your spirit begin to break limitations, begin to break boundaries. Lord, let there be a stretching of everyone's spirit under the sound of my voice, that they will be empowered by your great light, by your great spirit, Lord. Lord, if you can speak in tongues, begin to pray in tongues softly to yourself with your hands lifted to heaven. There is power being released. There's authority being released against evil spirits. You will help your family. You will pray for your family. Deliverance shall happen by the sound of the words off your tongue. The anointing is visiting someone's tongue. It is visiting. In the powerful name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every stronghold of Satan. Every habitation of the enemy is being shaken now. It is being shaken now. Under the sound of the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord, you wicked structures. Come down in the powerful name. I pray in the powerful name. In the powerful name of Jesus. Let it begin to bow. For it is written that everyone, every knee should bow. Every tongue shall profess that you are God. Everything, every living creature, everything under the sea, every marine demon, every demon of the desert, every demon of the forest, every demon of witchcraft, every demon from the pits of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us by the powerful name of Jesus Christ. I say witchcraft in the dream come down and be destroyed. Let the tomb be destroyed. In Jesus' name, every binding, spell binding of Satan, every ritual being done, even against their finance, against their, their mind and their mental health, let it come down now. In the name of Jesus, let it be dispersed by your great light. Lord, make our tongues the pen of a ready writer, that we would make our life according to the things we've made touching the king. Lord, we are anointed for this. Lord, you have blessed us and given us abundance of life. Lord, we shall be blessed. We shall live and not die. We shall declare the works of the Lord. You have blessed us and given us abundance of life. Lord, we shall be blessed. We shall live and not die. We shall declare the works of the Lord in the land. you today in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you so much. Lord, let impartation of light go forward now. Let light go forward now. Those who need power, let it go forward now. Let them receive the grace of the Lord now. Let them receive the touch of the Lord now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you need now in your heart, give it to the Lord. 
Whatever you need, your prayer request to the Lord, give it to the Lord now. And say, thank you, Lord, for doing it. Prophetically say, thank you, Lord, for doing it. The Lord is receiving your prayer request. He will do this thing. God is expressing his love to you. We know the love of Christ because he has been poured out in our hearts according to Romans 5.5 5, by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, express your love, the love of God for us. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your hand. I thank you for your might. Those who have no stamina, increase stamina now, Lord. Lord, increase their stamina. Lord, those who have no peace, give peace unto your people. Lord, those who cannot stand up for themselves, give a backbone and give strength. Lord, fight for them. Fight for your people. Lord, cause your face to shine upon your people. Cause your face to shine upon your people. King of glory, as we all lift up our everlasting doors, that you should come in, King of glory. Lord, Come in. Lord, we worship you. Take us into a deeper dimension. Take us deeper and closer to you. Let us be saturated with your power. Saturated with your presence, God. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, God. It is all about you, Lord. You are Yahweh. You are God most high. Any demon oppressing our freedom. Oh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let liberty, let freedom go forward now. Let freedom go forward now. I said those chains are breaking by the power of the Holy Ghost. I said those chains, those internal chains are breaking. Those mental limitations are breaking now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those mental limitations are breaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Greater dimension, stretching of your spirit. According to my calling and the grace that God has humbly given to me to place me in the ministry, I increase by the power of the Holy Ghost, your authority. I increase. I increase your power and authority now as God has given me. This is my calling to empower the saints. Receive the power of God now. Receive the power touching you now. Receive the hand of Jesus touching you now. Begin to receive it now. Begin to receive it now. Begin to receive him now. In Jesus' name. <laughs> take the power. Somebody take the power now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody's receiving deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Bless and praise your holy name. <laughs> amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right, everybody, I'm about out of battery. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for everybody who gave on uh, TikTok. Everybody for giving. May God strengthen your hand. And may God increase your harvest a hundredfold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're not on Assembly of the Prophets, go to YouTube at Assembly of the Prophets. Amen. God bless you even more, Abby. God bless you all. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day with my family. I'll, I'm, it's beyond words, the privilege that God has given me to come and share what he is, um, what he's taught me and what he's told me in private and to just do my calling. Um, I don't take it lightly. So thank you all for spending this time with me and hearing um, the words of God. God bless you all. Remember we're blessed and no one can change it.